Triple Crown here, Saturday, March 23rd, 2024. One of two shows that I'm going to this weekend, back-to-back -back days, over in Newark, Ohio. My first time ever at this show at the Moose Lodge. And I'm excited to go into today's show. Both the shows on my schedule this weekend are smaller shows. And the nice part about that is I get to spend some more time in the value boxes. That's kind of where I like to spend most of my time, <laughs> to be quite frank. And it allows me to search for some of those pesky, harder-to-find cards for some of my sets. And, of course, always looking for the good deal or two in the value boxes. But outside of that, I am preparing for what I'm calling a little gauntlet coming up here to start the springtime cycle of shows. After this weekend, I will be setting up five of the next seven weekends. And because I'm doing that, I'm going to need to have quite a bit of inventory ready to go. And then I have two large shows that will lead into the start of summer. That means I have my work cut out for me to make sure I'm well stocked. And the only way to do that is to start shopping around. So let's get into it, see what I can find today. All right, one of my strategies when going through boxes is to try to find things that stand out in terms of the colors and the patterns of the cards. I've gone through enough boxes in my time to know what some of the more common parallels look like and what sets I'm going to be just passing on because they don't really interest me all that much. But I have to say that the variety in a lot of these boxes today were pretty incredible. There's a lot of numbered stuff there, some low numbered stuff even in that little particular section I just went through. Brock Purdy case hit kind of mixed into those boxes. Things that you might normally expect to see in a showcase that are mixed into the boxes. You see that Ryan Nelson 101 auto that I set to the side. I just was thumbing through, saw the platinum border, and knew that that usually means one of one with tops. And I figured, you know what, 50 bucks? I think that's something that I'll add to my stack and kind of take a look at in a little bit. Keep going through here. I find some autographs. This is an unlicensed uh, Leaf Trent McDuffie auto, one of the best corners in the game. And that was in a $2 box. I, I just had to grab that because, I mean, one of the best corners in the game for 2 bucks. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take that. And that's part of the joy of uh, going through these boxes is just finding things that you normally wouldn't expect to find. Now, of course, I'm always looking for cards for my set here. No dice here. I did see some 2023 Topps Chrome Color mixed in, but alas, no blue refractors. It's going to be tough to find the ones that I need. And then the blue ices, I'm pretty sure I found a 2021 or a 2022 mixed in here, but as is usually the case, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Never can find those 2020s. They are very elusive in these show value boxes. So I keep building up my stack. I have a little Andrew McCutcheon mini there, the Garrett Wilson card I had at the start of the clip, and then that Ryan Nelson. And that's pretty much going to be it for me at this dealer's table. Let's see what he can do for me on a price for the entire stack. All right, I got these. These were in your two dollar box. All right. This was in your judge stack. I don't know what you want on that one. I got five bucks on this. Okay. This was in that box there, the five dollar box. I don't know. It didn't have price on it, but I'd probably be at ten bucks on this. Ten bucks, okay. Uh, I've oh, got this here. Um, all those one on ones are kind of up and down. So yeah, I didn't really know what to put on this, one, so I kind of just put off based off of what I see. Um, I do 45. 45? That's fine with me. I was fully expecting him to come at me with $60 since the sticker price was $69, but I will gladly take 45 on that stack. The Ryan Nelson is an interesting card. He's a name that isn't too popular in the hobby. I don't know if that will ever change, but a one-of-one -one autograph from Flagship, those are just so incredibly difficult to pull. I figured even at, if I took it at the full $50 price sticker, it was a card that was worth a gamble on. I've definitely spent $50 in worse ways in my life, but I got a few cool value box cards to go along with it. Not a bad start, but we got to keep going. Lots more cards to buy today. Next table, this guy was incredibly friendly. We talked about baseball for a little bit. He's got some really nice low-numbered baseball parallels and just some numbered stuff out of hobby. Here you see this trout red foil I'm looking at. He's got 40 on it, a little too much for me to negotiate. And then this Royce Lewis refractor. I picked this up expecting like 20 bucks on it. No, he's got $4 on it. And Royce Lewis, he had an incredible end to last season. Unfortunately, a career that's been plagued by injuries, and for a number one overall pick, he's got all the talent in the world, 
Hope he can stay healthy because he just seems like a genuine world-class dude. Shout out to Dustin and Blake here on YouTube. I just hope he doesn't have too much success when he's going against the old English D uh, during the summer of being a division rival. But yeah, that was a no-brainer at four bucks. Had to go ahead and pick that up. And if not, I'm still good at doing 50 on that with the So. How much was your very master um, watch and card? Less than what it says you can grab out on the bag. I think I had like 60 on it. Um, oh, so the patch is from. Yeah, it's this like thing. you build out a set. It's a 30 piece. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I thought it was like off of a jacket or something. That would like, be sick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I got that in a lot. It's pretty cool, but yeah, it's not like a game or anything like that. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> but it gets people to stop and ask. It, it is an eye catcher. How about your Machado up there? What do you have on um, I've done a few deals before with this gentleman. I think this is the first time that I've been on this side of the table buying from him. And I include that Barry Sanders card in there as well as this Machado to just show you this really cool stuff that you can find sometimes, even going to these smaller shows. You never know exactly what is going to pop up. And in this next clip here, you're going to see me find some things that are right up my alley that I can't even tell you when the last time I saw them at a card show was, if I ever have before. I end up just picking up a few value box cards here, but you never know what you're going to find at a show, and that's part of the fun that keeps uh, bringing me back. This dealer has some of the best boxes in the Midwest, bar none. I love going through his boxes. We've made a few deals before on both sides of the table. But he has stuff from all different eras, all different sports, all different products, little tiny Easter eggs hidden in there of various parallels or tough to find inserts, and they're all priced pretty fairly. There's an adage that was once told to me a few years back that I've kind of tried to live by. There's a difference between having good stuff and good stuff at good prices, and he definitely fits the latter part. He's not giving this stuff away for free, but he knows what he has. <laughs> we always hear that, right? I know what I have. Well, he knows what he has, and he asks a fair price on it. And a lot of times when I'm looking at stuff like this, you're not going to be able to get it for a percentage of the last sale like a lot of people are used to trying to do with ultra-modern cards because they don't pop up that often. Like, for example, that Joe Thomas Blue Refractor, there's only been one in the last year that has sold that I could see. It was a PSA 10, and it was, in my opinion, a pretty poor listing. And I'm kind of at the mercy of paying whatever the dealer wants on a card like this because I don't know when the next one will pop up. I didn't look to see how many are available right now, but I'd be willing to bet if there are any available, they're probably not at a reasonable price. These things just don't come up to auction. And because of that, if you see them and you really want them, you're going to have to be prepared to pay strong. And that's the case what I'm willing to do here with this Joe Thomas Blue Refractor, as well as another Joe Thomas card that is a little bit more buried in my stack here. Before I make any negotiations, I'm going to check over the showcases one final time, see if there's anything else that I might want to add, ask for some prices, and then we'll get into negotiations. Oh, nice. What'd you have on these two? Uh, 60 each. 60 each? Okay. I'm gonna make a call on this. It's from yeah, my, my friend's yeah, set, yep. but he doesn't always update his sheet, so I don't want to yeah. commit before. <laughs> For those of you who may watch my friend Mike Baseball Collector, you'll notice whenever he gets a mail day and he says it's from me, of something that I found at a show, this is usually how it goes down. I see this 2017 five-star Cal Ripken auto, and that strikes me as something that he might need for a set. I go into my phone, I pull up his spreadsheets that show his want list, and I see that it's on there. I have an idea of what he's going to want to pay for it, so I ask the dealer, and then I go and I look up the sales history on it and kind of determine, all right, is this something that Mike would make an offer on? And I've done enough deals at this point where I can kind of get a feel for if Mike's going to be interested or not. So I call him up here, tell him what the card is, tell him that the dealer wants this for it, confirm that his sheet is up to date and he doesn't already have it, and then see if he wants to go for it. I call him up, he is good on this one, so no deal here, but 
That's usually how it goes. I'm always trying to keep an eye out for friends who may be looking for something in particular. Another example, you saw that Kofax card that I had pulled out. It's numbered to 20. I have a friend who collects Sandy Kofax, and he's always on the lookout for anything that's numbered of Kofax. He tells me that if it's numbered, he doesn't have it. <laughs> so in that case, I pulled that aside for him, and hopefully I can swing a deal to get that for his collection as well. But now that I've looked out for a few friends, I don't see anything else that I want. It's time to go ahead and make a deal on the stack. You shoot me an offer if you got a number in mind. That's what I'm figuring it out now. Okay. The only one I'm far apart on is the Joe Thomas Exquisite. Yeah, I'd be at like 170 for the whole stack. How much? One seventy. I was at two hundred. I mean, we're not terribly far off. Yeah. I do one ninety. Does anything for you? Man. I can get there. One seven. Did you do one sixty if I took this one out? That's what I'm least interested in. Yeah. So. We're a little closer. I do 175. You got us a little closer. Yeah. Um. I unsuccessfully tried to interest him in a trade here. I kind of figured that would be the case. Usually I'm only going to resort to that if I absolutely need to. And I felt that was the case here to get me closer to my number. But look, on cards like this, we're not that far apart. I offered him 160. He said 175. Do I really want to let a Joe Thomas Exquisite RPA and Blue Refractor walk away over $15? No, I do not. So I shake his hand and I take it for $175 because when's the next time I'm going to see him? And I'm very pleased with that. Again, you never know what you're going to find at these smaller shows. And these are cards that I have probably never seen at a show before. And I don't know when the next time I'll see him is. And because of that, I had to jump now while I had the chance. I'm not going to force myself into something. Else. I'll just take these at 175. <laughs> You're good, man. Yeah. I love that kind of stuff, though. It's just, again, you just don't see it. I do. That one, that one I bought graded, actually. I gotcha. You just never see them. Raw or not. It's cool. I keep talking myself into things that I don't really need and then <laughs> get myself in trouble. Well, you, you don't see shit very often. Anymore. Right. Well then, you know, two months later I'll be like, yeah, I kind of wish I would have bought that, but yeah, it's a story that's why, uh, hey, man, I, especially the 90s stuff, I hate passing up on it because it is, when are you going to see it again? Right, you don't know when it's going to happen. Hey, listen, I know I might have paid up for it, but it's 15. Know, you have to. It. Yeah, I'm not going to find it again. I totally echo this dealer's sentiment. Sometimes on some of this stuff you just have to grab it when you can. He did have a Greg Maddox credentials in there that I was looking at. You'll overhear me say I don't want to force myself into something. That's because I started to kind of talk myself into the deal and including that in there in my head. And usually when that happens, it's a sign that I need to walk away. I shouldn't try to force something. It was a cool card, but I didn't really love it. I liked it. I just didn't love it. And because of that, I end up walking away with two cards that I really do love in that Joe Thomas Blue Refractor and the Exquisite RPA. Incredibly excited to pick those up. But then I also get the Kofax for my friend, which is nice. He's going to reimburse me for that this upcoming weekend. Also get a cool Terry, or excuse me, Scary Terry <laughs> McLaurin slab there for the Purple Stars. Number to 25, just a nice solid stack of cards. One of my favorite deals that I made of the show. This is raw stuff here. And this is all the graded here for football. I'm on my last little lap around the show here. This gentleman is packing up for the day. 
And he tells me if I see anything I like, we can try to work out a deal here last minute. He said he's also open to trades. Ask him what he's looking for, and he says mostly football. He does some basketball. I pull out the one basketball card I have and then all of my football to see what he likes. He does have a retail storefront not too far away from here. And because of that, I think that we might be pretty good trade partners. There are certain cards that definitely sell better, in my experience, in a storefront compared to at a show. And also certain cards that he might be able to maximize his value getting them into his store showcases. And because of that, I feel like I might have some cards that appeal to him here. He pulls out a few things, and I'm feeling pretty confident that we can work out a trade. I'm going for those cards you see to the right of my case, the Randy Moss, the Sun God RPA, and the Derrick Henry RPA as well. My phone is dead. Touch cover. On the Munoz, that is the only way to... Take care, buddy, man. Take it easy, man. Good to see you. That's the only graded one that's sold on the moon yet. Yeah, the curry is about 100 bucks for all. So, as we see, it's like 237, 224. This one was on the 10 of 10, right? So, it's a little yeah. bit more. So, that was like a little bit more like 225, right? 230 ish. Yeah. Does that make more sense? I'm not trying to haggle you. I'm just no. trying to be fair whenever I try to go resell it. Munoz is 30, so 230, 260-ish. This is going to be tough, isn't it? So this one raw around 100 bucks. I put 150 on it. You know, you tell me what you think it's worth. There's no nine sales that I know of, but yeah. I can pull up the raw ones. Yeah, go ahead, please. If you will, please. This is something that I have found helpful over the years when I am trying to go up to dealers, trying to either sell or trade, is that I will pull up the sales on card ladder for my cards and I'll, of course, I'll already have my price stickers on my cards as well. But that helps speed up the process for the dealer. I can show them where I'm coming up with my prices, what I'm seeing on it. Most dealers are still going to do their own research. This gentleman, his phone happens to be on low battery here, or I think it's actually dead. So I'm letting him use my phone here to go ahead and look it up just so he can check my numbers. Maybe he's going to search for the card in a different way. And that way he can kind of find something that perhaps I don't. And that just speeds it up for him a little bit and adds a little transparency to the deal. But if you can make it easier on the dealer, the more likely you are to be successful in making a deal happen. Yeah, you can try to steer there. Um, this was like a general market, 250 to 225 was the narrative there. And I, I kind of did the same thing here with you on these ones. Yeah. So with this, I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of running away from it because, like, again, like we just talked, they usually try to throw that number in your face. PSA 9 doesn't mean anything, even though it definitely should. So right. I think it should. I I'm, not, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to devalue your cards because I want them. Uh, well, they say the same thing to me that they say to you, so I just yeah. trust me. Anything that me is not going to... Mm. Where do you feel comfortable? Uh, I, feel, I feel comfortable in here. I don't feel so comfortable here. Uh, I mean, in terms of like what number would work for you there, because like I'm not, I'm not married to it, so you, mean, you tell me. Comfortable is ninety. Um, That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So with this, with these being more like two sixty ish and ninety there, that puts us at like three three fifty ish. Yeah. Um, I have to give mad respect to this dealer here because the way that he's approaching this, I absolutely love it. He is applying the same rules to my cards as he is on his. What he's saying about mine, he's saying right back on his stuff right there. He's trying to make it equal on both sides as much as possible while also still trying to come out ahead on his side of the trade because, well, he's a dealer. That's what dealers want to do, right? And because of that, I'm very apt to try to make a deal with him just because I like his style and I'm really enjoying our conversation. And these. What did we say on these? I think he's at 230 and 70. I think at even 300. 300? Yeah. And then you had 230, 30. 90. So 350 there. 350. See now, now we worked backwards, and I owe you money, <laughs> and I don't like that as much. Um, Can I see that Bettis real quick? Sorry, I'm going to hold you. No, up absolutely good. Absolutely. This is really freaking sweet. I was going to be too far away on that Derek Henry, but this dealer definitely wants to have the cash going to him rather than me on this deal. 
which means to get this to work, I'm gonna try to find something else that I want and try to add it into my stack to complete the process here. I like that. Um, I guess how much cash do you want me to add there? To, uh, this is what's fucking the deal up for me. I'm being honest with you, that's what's fucking the deal yeah, up. No worries. Um, I don't want to throw the whole deal away. But how, how far off we, are we off if we take this out? You might notice that jump cut there, and that's because there was a long silence, and I kind of had a feeling that he was uneasy about something. My guess was it going to be that curry card because he seemed kind of reluctant about it when we were talking earlier on, and my gut serves me right here. He is a little bit hesitant on it, and ultimately, I don't want this card to break up this deal. I definitely need the cards right now with those shows coming up, and if that means I need to use cash instead of that card, I'm perfectly content with that uh, to make sure that this deal happens. I'd rather we work it out now rather than trying to work it out on, say, Instagram later on that night. Let's take the curry card out of the equation, and I think that this is going to get done pretty quickly. If we took this out, how much cash do I need to add? If that's what's... Yeah, because that's what's messing it up for me. I'd want to be with like 125 cash on top, so 230 here. 230, 260, 260, 230, 260. So take this out, add 120 cash to get those with these. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. What's your name? There it is. I'll end up taking that curry back with me, but I guess that's not a huge problem since I really do need the cards at this point in time. I'm glad that we were able to work it out. Again, I always say this whenever I'm making a trade. I don't want anyone to feel bad about a trade that they made with me. And I could tell that if he took on that curry, there probably would have been some kind of hesitation or lingering feeling. I don't want that when someone trades with me. I don't want them to take a card off my hands because they feel like they need to to make the deal work. I'd rather the card go to someone who actually wants it and is comfortable taking the card on. So both sides, I feel, came out winners on here. And that's ultimately what I want to see out of any deal. That's going to do it for this vlog. I'll be back later in the week with another one from the Sunday show I went to. Take care, stay safe, be kind.